City of Montreal is planning to end its CWF, its Community Water Fluoridation Program, by the end of the year. In the vast majority of the city, there is no fluoridation, but there are two treatment plants on the West Island still in use, Dorval and Point Claire, and they serve independent municipalities on the West Island for now. Dr. Christopher Labos has been thinking and writing about this. He's an epidemiologist and cardiologist in Montreal, and that's what we're going to talk about this week. Morning, Dr. Labos. Good morning, good morning. So municipal officials in these affected communities have been expressing real concern about losing an important health benefit. Let's start with that, Dr. Labos. What does the research say about the benefits of fluoridation? So the benefits of fluoridation and the reason we do it is for dental health, to prevent cavities, to prevent tooth loss. From the early to mid 20th century, when people realized that the absence of fluoride in groundwater was contributing to the high rate of tooth decay that we were seeing across North America, the implementation of a water fluoridation program, which started first in North America, was actually in Brantford, Ontario, from, from what I've read. From 1945. The when that was, 1945 yeah. in Brantford, yes. Yeah. So the minute, so from the point where that was initiated, what we've seen is a drastic decrease in cavities. And whereas before it was fairly common for children to have multiple cavities over the course of their life, it was pretty common for people to lose teeth in their later age because of the repeated cavities. We have now gotten into a situation where most children will never have a cavity like me, and most people will get into their old age with all their teeth. The idea that you would lose your teeth as part of normal aging is really no longer a valid thing because in part we now have now we now put fluoride in our drinking water to make sure that our teeth stay healthy so they've been calling fluoridation this community water fluoridation one of the 10 greatest public health achievements of the 20th century is that hyperbole or has it really been that significant in changing it really things? has been that in significant. an equ- equitable way i think is the, is the point that we need to make too about all of this everybody would have access right that's the point because if you say things like well you know we have fluoride in our toothpaste now we can take fluoride supplements yes that's true but the thing about water fluoridation is that everybody drinks water. Everybody has access to it and everybody has access to it for free. The minute you start saying, go to your dentist, get you know water that has fluoride in it, go get special toothpaste that has fluoride in it, you're now putting the onus on the consumer to go and get it. Whereas mm-hmm. this way you deliver it to everybody and you deliver it to everybody relatively cheaply compared to all the other things that you have to do to get fluoride into people. So is that the argument, you know, because you can get it in toothpaste and mouthwash and other sources, is that the argument for municipalities opting out? Because many have, it's not just Montreal, it's across the country to varying degrees. So why opt out then? Well, I think there's a few arguments to it. The one is the financial one. People say it's like, well, everybody has fluoride toothpaste. We have access to a dentist. We sort of ignore the fact that a lot of people don't actually have access to a dentist and don't actually have dental care. But that's the argument that's often made is like, well, we don't need this anymore because it's not the 1940s, 1950s, 1960s. We can put fluoride in there and other stuff. We don't have to put it in the water. The the counter argument to that is, well, why not put it into the water? It is cheaper to do that than to make people go out and buy more expensive toothpaste. It's more more. It's cheaper to do that than to tell people go to the dentist, because when they've done cost effective analyses, every dollar you spend on a water fluoridation program ends up saving you five dollars in dental care down the road. And that's even by the most conservative estimates. So tomorrow online in the Gazette and then Wednesday in the paper copy. Uh, There's going to be a piece that you've written on all of this. And it's interesting, we've learned in talking to you in in preparation for this conversation, you've actually been writing on this for about a decade. Is your argument the same? Has anything changed as you see this issue or as you perceive this issue, Dr. Labos? No, I don't think so. Because listen, the economic argument is something we can always debate. We can look at the numbers things will change. But water fluoridation is still the the most efficient way to do this very, very important thing, which is important for the dental health of people. The other arguments that you sometimes hear people say about, oh, it damages the IQ, it affects all that. Yeah, we should probably mention that before we go. There was a study, I think it's been debunked, but there is a study that people often cite that it damages brain development in children. 
Yeah, I mean, so I don't put much stock in that for a couple of reasons. Number one, IQ is not a good way to measure brain development. IQ is fun if you're doing an online quiz. Not that reliable as a medical tool. There's a lot of things that can skew IQ. And even the studies that have done this, they show differences in IQ test points of like one to two points. That is trivial. I mean, your IQ score of a standard deviation is about 10 points before you see any meaningful change. So even if it were true, which I don't think it is, a change of one and two points points doesn't matter and a lot of these studies are referring to places like Texas where they have very 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 high levels of fluoride in their groundwater because of the uh, composition of their soil which is not at all relevant here they're talking about fluoride levels above 1.5 water fluoridation programs are at less than half of that at 0.7 so it's really not I, I don't put much stock into this argument yet it keeps getting recycled I think to scare people and to justify what sometimes feels more like a cost-cutting measure than anything else okay look forward to your piece tomorrow thanks dr. Labos appreciate the time as always my pleasure take care